Tonight we have, as you see, Lady <laughs> Post Office. And this is a subject that's very close to Judy's heart because of her family being involved in many, well, at least two of them that I know of. So. Okay, I have to confess, I am not an expert on postal history. So what I know, I know from family, my own remembrance, family history, and from the wonderful archives of the Historical Society. And you can't believe the gems in, in the files. And also from Crafts and Kane histories. And they are, they're wonderful because they, they tell you the background stories and they make it very chatty. And so you get a real sense of how people lived. And I have to admit, I learned a whole lot putting this together, and I, I hope you do too. Um, there's an organization problem with this. You can either organize it chronologically, or you can sort of go Waitley Center, East Waitley. I chose to do it chronologically, so we're going to be jumping back and forth a lot. But I think the history so much of this relates to technological changes and transport changes. And I think it makes more sense to go by time period. So bear with me as we jump around town. And for people from West Waitley, um, Derek and I both think that there was briefly a post office in West Waitley. I couldn't find any reference to it. She hasn't been able to find any reference. I've seen it, but I can't find I, it. I, can't I couldn't where. find it either. Um, I did learn that the Postal Service records prior to 1900 are pretty feeble. So the his, I'm not sure where the history of, of the postmasters in Waitley that was in Ina Kane's book came from. I know Crafts, was, he was speaking from his own memory, I think. I have updated. There's an appendix in the Kane history of Waitley Postal History. I've updated it for what I found, but I have learned that there's there are probably still some errors in there because the 19th century stuff is is hard to come by. So um, we take for granted that there's mail. <laughs> We take for granted that it comes to your house, at least if you don't live in Whateley Center, it comes to your house, but um, um, we take for granted that it's every day, but it wasn't always that way. Before 1815, if you got mail, it went to either Hatfield or Northampton, and they put an ad in the Gazette and told you to, <laughs> it was there. <laughs> and then you had to send for it, and then you had to pay for it. Um, the recipient paid the postage, and uh, so there wasn't a lot of mail. <laughs> In 1815, they, the first post office was established here. It was in George Colt's house, in the, which was a store. And if you think about it, it makes sense that almost all the post offices were in stores. It's where people came. <coughs> congregated and helped the store man to have people come pick up their mail, help the people because they were going there anyway. And you would be amazed at the number of houses in Waitley Center that had stores in them at one point or another. There were zillions of them. But this house was a store and in the southeast bedroom was the post office. The mail came once a week. It came down the county road over Poplar Hill from Buckland and Conway down to Northampton on horseback, um, and then went back the next day. So it, the Buckland mail came down that way, and then the Northampton <coughs> mail came the next day. According to Crafts, there were very few letters. 10 to 12 a week would be a lot. Um, and it was, it was expensive. and. I haven't chased through the postage, but evidently it was so expensive that people only wrote very sparingly and mostly on business, I would think. So if you knew a family member was coming, you would write these long, effusive letters with full of news and give them to the family member so they could deliver them. But you didn't, you didn't mail them. Now, in 1816, Elijah Alice was 
appointed postmaster, and even Derek, this brilliant sleuthing for houses, couldn't figure out where the post office was initially. But by 1820, he moved to the Waitley House, which is where the Waitley Inn was. But the building then looked like that, or it looked like part of that. This is an 1888 photo. It was added on to an 1874. This is a cyanotype. It's a kind of print that was blue, and it's made by the Allen sisters, the famous photograph photographers from Deerfield. And they did a book of Wheatley, about what, 10, 15 pages of, and just beautiful photographs. We're very lucky to have it. You'll see several of them here. Now, in 1832, East Whateley got its first post office, and David Stockbridge was the postmaster, and it was in his tavern, quote, in the Straits. Now, the Straits were the land along River Road up to, I guess, Long Plain Road, which was then called Straits Road. This was a new building. He had had an older tavern, very monumental building. It's the site of the East School, the Blue School. Now, I think we have to realize in, in the 1820s, 30s, East Whateley was a bustling part of town. And remember, transport is key here. We had the county road coming down to Whateley Center. By the early, by 1820 or 30, you've got the river road going north-south, but also river traffic. David Stockbridge controlled all the boating between Northampton and Cheapside, evidently, and the ferry went across there. Now, I can't say for sure that the mail was coming there by river, but I wouldn't be surprised. It wasn't coming by river, it must have been coming up River Road, but I don't think it's any accident that, that David Stockbridge was postmaster. Although, being postmaster was a patronage position in those days, so it was a very plumb position to have. You appointed people of your political party. Even into the 50s, that was, a, that was the way it was done. So. In 38, um, there was a stage line. 19 or 18? I'm sorry, 18. Oh. Thank you. 38, yeah can't prove your own stuff. <laughs> um, would have been interesting to see horses running around <laughs> in 1938. Every 10 miles, um, there were horses uh, went, I think, from Springfield to Haverhill. And for the first time, there was daily mail service. And this is a quote from Crafts. And I'm not sure whether it's with the start of the stage or just shortly after when the railroad came. But he's talking about the fact that it got cheap and frequent mail. And it's just like if you think about the internet coming or television coming, and all of a sudden the world is opened up to you. But isn't that a wonderful, yeah. just, just all of a sudden, he said that people didn't have newspapers much before, it was too expensive. All of a sudden you're in touch with the world and, and just like a miracle. Okay, back to the center of town, another cyanotype. Um, you might not recognize the Smike's house, but that's it. Samuel Lezur, he was appointed postmaster for briefly now and then again later. And evidently he was much, much loved because he got old and his daughter became postmistress, but he still handled the mail, but he, he was very much liked. Again, this was a store. This was his store, as you can tell by the long shop windows in front. And he lived the next house north, and that was his house. So there were, I think, four postmasters in that house. So he, his daughter, and two others. And on Ina Kane's list, the Alice postmaster isn't there, so clearly that's not a complete list. Now back to East Whateley again, all of the post offices there were in stores. Yeah, so again, um, the post office in the store, the depot, 
there would have been a crane or, or a hook hanging by the track and they would have hung the mail on. They threw the mail bags off. Um, there's a note in one of the files that says occasionally there would be a quote snowstorm when the train ran over the mailbag. <laughs> um, the, the, there were messengers that picked up the mail from the depot and took it to the various post offices. And there's a reference in one of the files that said they went four, four or five times a day. And in 1928, they got paid, four, 1930, they got paid $480 a year to be messenger. Now we're back to the center of town. From the Samuel Lazure house, um, when Micah House became postmaster, he moved it to his store across the street. So we're back in the Waitley House. That's the site of the Waitley Inn. That building burned in, I think, 1894. And it was a great loss to Whateley. I, tourism was a huge business. I mean, the, the Stockbridge Hotel, the Maplewood Hotel, there were three or four hotels in town. Um, Whateley Glen was a big deal. But the Whateley House was, was a huge part of this. And the whole town pressured these people to rebuild because the, the economy of the town took a big hit when that, was, when that burned. So it was rebuilt to look like that. Okay, I think you have to understand how important the mail was. And, you know, it came all the time. This is a card that was sent to Harvey Waite. Harvey went on to marry Arlene Root, who was Herbert Root's sister. And he was part of our family, so I, we inherited all these postcards. This is mailed in 1912, and it says, Harvey, please bring me granulated sugar and package of B-rolled oats. Hastily, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> so How much is the stamp? One cent. Oh, one cent. She's That's a penny postcard. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's... Now, she obviously knew he worked in the store where the yeah. post office was, but I think people used the mail like we would use emails or texts yeah, now. Um, it was probably cheaper than a phone call. Um, there's another, yeah, the phones, they, <laughs> Ina Kane says there were phones almost every place in Waitley by 1909. But how much people used them or how much they cost, mm -hmm. I don't know. But there's another postcard where she says, please bring home a can of white paint. <laughs> you know, so so um, it's, it's a different way to use mail than we think about today. And I read these British mystery books, and they're always sending people a message in the morning they expect to get there by 2 in the afternoon. You know, it's, it's, it's just very, very different. Um, the store, the big general store closed in 1928 and this, the current post office was built and Harvey Waite did the construction of it or ordered it and the Historical Society has the invoice and I think it added up to something like $1,400. You know, the total, the total costs of building this were $1,149.96. Now this store was much smaller. It was, I think, more what you, rather than being a general merchandise store, more what you think of as a convenience store today. There were groceries and milk. You know, for the life of me, I can't remember the setup. I rode the school bus from 1959 to 1965 that Frank Ferrick drove, and every day, out to West Whaley, and we would stop here, and he'd let us out, mm -hmm. and we would go in and buy popsicles and candy in that store. I can't remember the inside, but I remember going in. Yeah, well, I think everybody remembers the penny candy. Yeah. I certainly do. I mean, you go for mail and get the penny right. candy. But they sell milk. Um, there are, we found, I found 
Remember those old Nabisco tin mm -hmm. containers that mm -hmm. you reached that had cookies and crackers, you reached mm -hmm. in and grab them? They, there were some in our barn, but they were so in so many pieces, I didn't think they would be any good for the historical society. But there were canned goods and coffee, I know. But how it was set up, I... Off to the left, there was a freezer. Yeah. And right straight ahead were the goods that, you know, you okay. could, the bread and the, that sort of thing. And the penny candy penny was, was, right. the, yeah. was on the counter, for, yeah. like where you right. got the mail. Yeah. I remember the big marshmallow cookies. So who was the house, who was running the store? Arlene. Arlene oh, okay. Ru Herbert's. I think Herbert must have gotten sick. Um, at by his wife at this point was postmistress, and Arlene, his sister Arlene ran the store. And she was also town clerk and librarian <laughs> in her spare time. I remember walking in that store in the fifties and sixties every day. Get in the mail. You walk in, and the first the counter was in the very center. The candy cases on the left, and the mailbox on the right. We had post office box 34. You go in there and open up your post office box there, and, and after there was another group of post office boxes on the right hand corner. Yep. You mentioned the the ice cream cooler, but when they closed or they were cleaning out it, the the building way back. They gave my family the uh, freezer, the ice cream cooler, and I had it in my garage for a number of years, and all the neighborhood kids would come and get popsicles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the Historical yeah. Society has the ice cream <coughs> scoop, if I'm not mistaken. I, I'm pretty sure of that. Now, rural free delivery came in 1929. Um, here is the sign-up sheet. This is the original, so people who had to certify that they would have their, their mailboxes up by December 1st and ready to get it. Um, it was the National Grange that was behind the big push-up to get RFD for the country. Really? Yeah. Well, I think Waitley, like, the rural towns seem to lag in all of these things because I think it, it actually started much earlier, but it got here then. The original RR1 covered all of Waitley, and it was serviced out of the Waitley Post Office, and Harvey Waite was the courier. <laughs> um, it was very incestuous, this whole thing. <laughs> um, but he wasn't married to Arlene until 1942, so I think... Anyway, um, by 19, in the 1930s, you're starting, there's some letters in the file. Um, the post office service is already trying to move the rural delivery to Haydenville and South Deerfield and places like that. And the Waitley postmistress is writing letters saying people will not want their their mail from there and courier weight does not want to start his route in Waitley in Conway. <laughs> but um, but by 1938 um, the rural free delivery service was out of both Haydenville and Conway's. And when we lived in West Waitley our address was Haydenville and I now live in Hatfield which is a different county but my address is Haydenville. So it's the same as it was yeah. 50 years ago. Yeah, and, well, it's that way. I mean, we all know there are three yeah. zip codes in Waitley, and, and I live on North Street, and I have a post office box, but if you get something delivered to North Street, you have to say you're in South Deerfield, yeah. and then, or if you try to tell the computer you're in Waitley, the computer won't take it, and then you have all this difficulty trying to tell it. And then it winds up at the post office anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, is the hard part. Now this, thank, have to thank John Pease for this one because <laughs> this is a, um, I don't know if you can read that, I have it. This is the letter sent from the 
on the last day. This card was mailed on the last day that the East Whateley Post Office was open. The office was established in 1838. It was really 1832, but anyway. In the old Stockbridge Tavern in Straits, under charge of David Stockbridge, who had charge of all the boating from Northampton to Cheapside, now part of Greenfield. The office was moved to the railroad station and has served daily since, um, since it was opened. Marshall R.P.'s postmaster. And that was mailed on May 31st, 1939. And the, it really was purple stamp like that. So that's just a wonderful thing to have. That would be your grandfather. Now, uh, in 1964, the root store was closed. I think Arlene had had it, and um, and it became just the post office and ran as just the post office. In '68, Harvey died and bequeathed the building to Gert Bardwell, and she left it to the. Historical Society, which owns it today. And I'm indebted to the recorder for this photo, which I had never seen before, never but, seen it but it was in the paper, and it shows Beverly Sanderson working in 1983. So you get a sense of the interior of the post office, which, which we hadn't nice. had before. And that's all I have. So. Thank you.